you asked for it, here it is. We're gonna convert this Coleman 220, what are you, Col 220J, 220J to burn kerosene. So this is gonna be for realsies. But the first thing I wanna try, I have read that one of these will burn kerosene right out of the box. So the first thing we need to do is drain the fuel. Okay, we've drained off the Coleman fuel with only minor spillage. Let's get some kerosene in this thing. I've got my kerosene bottle. You know it's kerosene because it's blue. Last step, we need a preheat cup. This is one of the ones I made a couple years ago on the channel. So let's take the generator out. So we'll get that out of there. And then he needs a preheat cup. Just slide that on. All right, so what we've got is a 220J, we've got a preheat cup, we've got a stock 220 generator. I'm gonna fill the preheat cup, and we can fire this thing up. There we go. So I'm gonna put the glass and the vent back on. Well, I see we're getting down there. Let's give this a try. Now remember, everything in the generator and the pickup tube is going to be Coleman fuel so I'm going to give it a second there's going to be Coleman fuel in the whole valve assembly give it a second to kind of work itself out but this should be burning kerosene and I don't think we'll see much difference now burning kerosene versus Coleman fuel I'm going to turn out the lights So here we go, Coleman 220J, completely unmodified, burning kerosene. It's a little yellow, it's a little yellow anyway, that's a function of the mantles, not the fuel. Um, yeah, I don't see any problem with this at all. It smells okay. Yeah, seems fine. We'll give that a few minutes and uh, see how it does. All right, well, this guy's been sitting here chugging along for 10 minutes. Uh, everything looks hunky-dory. I don't see any carbon buildup on the mantles. It's the same brightness it was. It doesn't smell. I don't see any problem with this. It's working good. So let's follow the internet's instructions for converting a 220 to burn kerosene, and that's to put a 200A gas tip on. So I'm just gonna Take this apart real quick and we're gonna steal the gas tip out of here. And there's what we want. I'm not even gonna take the generator off. Just get this guy out of here. Preheat is about done. Let's give it a try. Remember, we haven't changed anything in the lantern. All we've done is add a 200A gas tip. Um, I don't really see any difference. Maybe it's a little brighter, but if it is, it isn't very much. Let's give this 10 minutes and see what happens. All right, I'm actually gonna end this early. Uh, this thing smells terrible. Um, it's way smellier now with the 200A gas tip than it was before. And I don't know why. The 200A gas tip should be smaller than a 220 gas tip. So if I was gonna convert 220s to kerosene, I would use the 220 generator and just put a preheater in it. That worked way better and it's super easy. Um, a couple downsides, it is harder to reach the preheat cup in a 220 than it is in a 200 or a single mantle lantern. Um, they didn't make very many two mantle kerosene lanterns. Coleman made one model, I think. Um, so you don't see these very often for a reason. Um, it's kind of not worth doing. The generators in the Coleman gas lanterns are much smaller than in the kerosene lanterns so they're going to clog up faster. Um, it is harder to light this. It's harder to get the uh, alcohol into the preheat cup. It's harder to light the preheat cup. 
Um, I don't see a whole lot of reasons to do this unless you had a really cheap source of kerosene and you just wanted to have everything burn on kerosene. But boy, whew, this thing stinks. I'm gonna convert this back and I'll see you guys next time.